Globally, interest rates are high, as are the cost of living. Singapore also frequently ranks highly as one of the most expensive cities in the world, making it harder to retire, as with anywhere else facing similar economic pressures. Which brings us to the topic of discussion for today. Retirement. Is it a growing pain or a growing gain? And with me to discuss this, we have our wonderful guests, starting with Fionn Poa, club membership broker and founder of Keeping Hope Alive, Dr. Arubindo Ghosh, Assistant Professor and Director of City Foundation SMU Financial Literacy for Young Adults, and Go Yong Piao, retiree and senior volunteer from RSVP Singapore. Thank Welcome everyone. Us. Maybe to just start off broadly, how would each of you define retirement? So retirement is uh, achieving financial independence. Mm. So the traditional definition of retirement, which is age specific, is probably not true anymore. Mm. Because the, when you get to where your targets in life are, you achieve financial independence and at that point you can do what you want to do. I will look at retirement as uh, the stage in life where you, are, you no longer contribute in an economic sense to, back to society. Um, I think of it as a phase in life where you have more time for yourself and um, you can look at other things uh, that give you joy and meaning in your life. Oh, very different. Uh. Maybe men and women are different. So what was your take? I will only push myself limit all the way, keep working, working, until one day that I can't. Medical report come out, oh, Fionn, you need to look after your body. Uh, that will be my, my retirement. Uh. Like Fionn, actually, I didn't think that I would stop working, but there was an opportunity that came along, and I actually had a break in my career. Mm. Today, I mentor Irish primary school kids. Um, we visit the schools once a, once a week and um, coach a group of students about um, social and emotional well-being. Um, I'm also a, a part-time coach with a Special Olympics football team. So I like to work with youth and young kids. Mm -hmm. um, I think they make, me, <laughs> they make me feel young and energized. So younger people right now are probably more cognizant of the problem, you know, particularly given that Singapore has been selected as part of the blue zone, so people can you know, expect to live beyond their 85th birthday. Now, that was not the case, you know, even you know, 30, 40 years back. The average life expectancy, expectancy might have been 65 years. There are people who are living longer and healthier lives as well. If you don't uh, plan ahead, you, you, of course, will be hit by all sorts of challenges and accidents. When I was just a, a young parent starting out with a, my first child or daughter, um, I did lose my job. So that shaped a lot about my thinking of what financial stability and achieving financial independence. So this was probably in my early 30s, mm. in my early 30s. Um, so I think that shaped a lot for me, my investment habits and making sure that I built up a sufficient nest egg and can support my family. Advice. It's a great and very important life story as well, as Young Piao mentioned. Uh, in fact, starting early, younger is always better. Sometimes life events force you to do that, as, as you're in your case. But in general, starting early gives you a longer runway to get to whatever goal that you are setting up in life. And, and longer means you also have the chance of making mistakes along the way. We don't become experts from day one. We get to have mistakes. But if those mistakes are made later in life, then the challenges are much higher to jump over. So everything must have planned. Everything yeah. must have planned. So it sounds like um, there are many different definitions of what retirement is. But um, when, when you all interact with the people that you do interact, what, what does a happy retirement look like to each of you or maybe from the perspectives of the people that you meet? So apart from financial independence and health, I think it's also very important that we do find purpose and uh, meaning in life when we retired. So for a lot of us, I think we, our social identity is very much tied in with our job and our work. And actually, once you stop working, you will find that very quickly, you will become insignificant to a lot of people. Really? Yeah, you lose your, your co-workers. You, know, you might want to ask them out for oh, coffee. Friends, <laughs> you will know who your true friends are once you retire. <laughs> Pick up hobby. La. How do we fill our time meaningfully? For me, it's about volunteering. RSVP is an organization where where their mission is actually to make every senior a uh, volunteer. The fact that you have accumulated the amount of knowledge over the, your entire lifetime is an important thing to give back. And mentoring, as Yang Piao mentioned, uh, mentoring is a very good way of giving back. 
Younger people have a lot of energy to do a lot of things, but they lack direction oftentimes. So mentoring does actually help a lot. You know, bringing young people on board, understanding that there are other perspectives as well. So I'll give an, give an example of in Japan, you would see a lot of greeters who are in their retirement. That is their, their job. So they greet in the bank, and in that process, you are getting an you know, engagement with people coming into the bank. In fact, they have seen others do the same. So there is no real shame. So my a little bit different now. So I actually started this Keeping Hope Alive platform. I encourage the young children to come up to be a volunteer. Mm -hmm. So with their knowledge that they are having, because they are just like a clean sponge, you know, they absorb so much and they are so smart and so fast. My kind of platform is that we encourage young children to be a volunteer. Mm -hmm. So to merge them with the senior. So they are the one that come and teach the elderly. So the elderly learn from them. So that connection is built across generations. I want to raise another point which is very important. So there is more studies that shows that older folks who are more active, engaging with young, have later onset of dementia. So it's a very good opportunity for them also to share their life story, their life skills and impart their values to the, to the students. So in the City Foundation Program for Financial Literacy, what we do is we have uh, a train the trainer program. It's a peer to peer program. It's young people teaching other young people, mm -hmm. and when they go oh, out to good. go out and meet with with these other students who have not. So maybe their parents are unemployed. You know, maybe mm -hmm. from you know lower to middle income households. Mm -hmm. They see a picture that you cannot teach them. Retirement is not really an end of a phase. It's kind of a beginning of another, and you have to find out and tie it with a purpose. But if we bring it back to each of you, right? What is your um, perspective on retirement? Like, what do you hope for retirement? If I really can retire at the retirement age, huh? Okay, first thing I want to do, I want to enjoy my country. Mm. I'll be travelling, I want to travel in my own country. Or I want to enjoy what my government has built for me. I told you, my uh, you know, interpretation of retirement is financial freedom. Mm. You know, there is one part is financial freedom, you know, you don't have any obligations that you have to work for. The other one is to enjoy. You know, I'm doing actually a job which I really do enjoy. You know, I'm interacting with young people and they are bringing in new problems to me, which is making me think. So I'm already enjoying that part. So in a way, I'm in the right space. I'm getting paid for something that I'm enjoying. I think social interaction is very important. Continue to be engaged with the society, uh, to have your own, build your own social circle. I think that's one of the uh, key things that will keep you mentally um, alive, alert. Having purpose, finding something that you enjoy doing, I think that's important. So you've all shared your personal goals for retirement. Uh, how do you think Singapore fares in supporting your goals or even goals of retirement in general? So I think that in Singapore or Singaporeans or anyone uh, who, who wish to free your time to do good for people, perhaps you can go deeper, try to search for the real needies that fall in between the crack uh, mm. and do your part for them. Because there's still many people who are really not not able to meet up uh, or not able to raise up their voice to say that I need help. So I think it's time that we should link up the people who are in need, the more real in need uh, to on government resources. Uh. And for a uh, lower income population, their proportion of how much they are spending on essential items are higher compared to higher income population. So they are impacted much more. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, the government is trying to help, but there are kind of limited scope that is there. Now, this has other implications as well. So, cost of living means that we also are concerned, can we have more babies? Because how expensive it is to have babies. So, one of the challenges or one of the ways, you know, if you look at other examples around the world, in, in Scandinavian countries, I think particularly Sweden, they have this thing that it, every child has, is assured of being taken care of. You know, I'll explain how. Suppose they are coming back from school, walking back, and they have to cross a street where there's heavy traffic. Someone will stop and make sure they cross safely. And this community way of helping, you know, it's not written in the rule. They are not going to break a rule if they, if they don't. But the fact that they care makes parents all parents. You know, you are helping someone's child, someone else is helping your child. So that helps this community to raise a kid. So there are always opportunities for people to come together, you know, to, to interact, even pursuing the same hobbies, same hobby groups, for example. So, so these are things uh, which are important. Skills Future, I think, opens a lot of doors for you. Um, you. If you just look at the type of courses that are available, you can go from how to be a barista, hairdressing courses, 
cooking classes. I mean, it runs a whole gamut of uh, interests, hobbies, and skills that you can pick up. Um, so it's a good way to you know, discover what you like and try new things that you may not have even thought about trying before in your working. I guess the other thing that I'll look at is uh, that we are an aging population. The neighborhood where I stay in in the last, I would say, four to five years, the neighborhood has transformed. It's now classified as a silver zone neighborhood where there is a higher proportion of seniors and most likely they are retired. And now at the road crossings, you have islands that are built in between so that seniors can actually um, take a rest in between before they continue to the other half of the road. Traffic light, now there's a big sign that says, please wait for the elderly to finish crossing before you, know, you make that right turn or left turn, which is great. So I think just in terms of physical infrastructure, so indeed, uh, you know, Singapore has a lot of facilities available. You know, in fact, with uh, aging population, as we talked about, that they are in the blue zone right now. So there is many safe to 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 support you know any medical needs. This will help to at least assuage a little bit of the fear of what if you know I'm alone and so on. I'm not taken care of medically. In terms of uh, the younger generation who will have to deal with the, their own thoughts about retirement going forward, right? Any, any advice that you have or any thoughts on that? Young people are more entrepreneurial than older ones, but they are also a little concerned about making financial decision early on. So unless we involve them in making financial decision, they are not going to be comfortable. And in fact, there is a term for it. It's called financial socialization, which is the earlier in their age, the young adults, for example, get financially socialized, they are more comfortable thinking about financial decisions. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Just like me, my retirement plan uh, for myself, I get my, my daughter involved. I must let her know that what is my retirement plan so that she's aware what to do. I give it to her when I'm 41, you know. Mm. So we are all set of parents. So we have to really get her involved in our retirement plan. So I think Singaporeans generally, we are very good at saving. But I think we might not be that great or knowledgeable or as comfortable with investing. Mm. So financial literacy, I think it's important. I think it's very it's important that we start young, start them young, get them comfortable with concepts of investing and you know learning how to invest, what to do with the money, and so they they are, they are not scared. You know, a lot of times I like, scared. Hey, how uh, How do I do this? They anyhow invest uh, with our base. Uh, it's our money, you know, not theirs. Like. There is that aspect of parents involving kids, but is there anything more on like uh, outside of the family that can be done to socialize uh, young, the younger generation to financial literacy? So most of the time, we try to protect our children from financial decisions. I don't think that's a good idea beyond a certain age. But the reason for that is that parents oftentimes, or people who are caregivers, are sort of the best people without any ulterior motive to teach them. That's one. But then it's also possible that there are some households the parents might not have knowledge either. There, you have to have exposure at the IT level or the poly level or the university level because once they understand that these decisions have to be made, they are more comfortable making the decision. They can come back home and ask their parents, do you know about this? And oftentimes, the learning happens in the reverse direction. So children coming back home might teach their parents about financial decision. Opportunity must be given to learn. So for both ITs and polys, uh, these are now part of their curriculum. For universities, they are, it's also in progress, but it's a little bit more challenging because universities, there is no preset curriculum that everyone follows. Awesome. Thank you all so much for sharing. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful discussion because we have come to the end of the chat. Now, there have been many different opinions that have been shared, but I think the one thing that we can agree on is that when it comes to retirement, there are many different perspectives. And if you would like to find out more, you can read From Strength to Strength by Arthur C. Brooks or The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce. You can find these books at your nearest library or the NLB mobile app. And if you would like to find out more about retirement and other exciting issues, please check out the Read to Be Sure website. Now, to end off, a question to you. Do you think retirement is a growing pain or a growing gain? Let us know in the comments because we would love to hear what you think.